Hey everyone, Jerry Mitchellark here. And I was trying to remember the other night, uh, sitting around during this quarantine, what was the first centerfire pistol I ever shot? And uh, I came to realize it was this model, 27. It's a, a war take-home souvenir from my father. He was in the Second War, and what he had told me back in the day there, uh, he was in the Army Air Corps. He was stationed in the Czech, Czech in Czechoslovakia before the Czech Republic. But anyway, uh, back then you could pack a cigarettes, you could get anything P38, uh, you could get Lugers, you could get you could get a pistol like this, uh, 32 caliber. And he didn't know anything about nine millimeter. He never heard the term nine millimeter. Being a country boy, he was raised on a farm. He did hear once upon a time of a 32 caliber pistol, so he figured he'd wanted to take home a war souvenir and he could find ammunition at home. So he traded a pack of smokes for this 32 here. It's actually uh, a Nazi proofed Model 27 is kind of unique in that aspect. So it sat at home and my dad being a very functional guy, everything he owned was like a tool. So to him, this was just another tool in the toolbox. And I remember when I was young, I was getting interested in firearms and he had told me, he said, you know, those pistols, they're not made to shoot. They just, you just point them and they're not accurate. So you just, you know, that's what you do with them. So <laughs> things have changed since then. But anyway, it had taken us out to the local, uh, shooting range, which was the dump behind Thibodeau, Louisiana, and uh, had a box of cartridges, I don't know, probably old as I was, and we shot this thing a few times, and it was pretty amazing how powerful, of course, when you're 10, 12 years old, you know, a 32 ACP is, is, is quite the caliber. But kind of give you an idea of the pistol itself, this was a wartime production. Uh, toward the end of the war, they were cranking these things out, trying to get them out to the, uh, to the uh, Nazis or, and, and uh, the German soldiers as fast as they could, so actually holds nine rounds in the mag and one in the chamber so it's a 10 shot 32 acp and kind of give you an idea of the second war i don't know if you guys ever heard the term the duffel bag cut and what that meant was anything you could stick in a duffel bag you could take home no questions asked so a lot of these long guns uh, rifles and shotguns that soldiers came across in the field if they could fit it in that duffel bag so a lot of times the stock would stick out and they would just hacksaw cut the stock off throw it in a duffel bag with it and when they got home, they reaffixed them together, and that was a duffel bag cut. And give you an idea, an old friend of mine that I used to hunt with back home, he was from back of Vashery there, uh, quite the outdoorsman, hunter, fisherman, and uh, he had taken home a, a German drilling, and he didn't know what that was. It was, it was a double barrel 16 gauge, and underneath it was a 9.3 by 74R caliber rifle barrel. Very high dollar flip-up sights. This gun is worth... I don't know how much money nowadays if he wouldn't have <laughs> altered it. But the, in his mind, he just wanted to hunt ducks with it. So he came from South Louisiana. That's what he did. So on the, on the ship back home, he brought it down into the, uh, into the machinist room, into the machine section of a ship. And all ships have a machine shop. So the old boy drilled it out, drilled the chamber out of that 9.3 by 74R and made it a 410. That was, that's what he wanted. So, but give you an idea... I think I actually got some 93 by 74 ammo here. Give you an idea what that what that drilling actually shot. I know somewhere on this. Yep, I have. Uh, this is my wall of shame. People think I don't know where stuff is, but I can show you something right here, guys. This is uh, yeah, it's right under the 22. There it is. Give you an idea what a 93 by 74 R is. So that German drilling was chambered in 16 gauge, and on the bottom was this 9.3 by 74R, which is really close to a 375 H&H. &H. So these are some uh, RWS cartridges, 285 grain. So he didn't know what this was, so he wanted to make it into a shotgun. So he had 16, 16, and a 410 on the bottom. But anyway, give you an idea of the Second War, if, it fit, if it, you could fit it in a duffel bag and bring it home. So this was my dad's war souvenir of his uh, time in Europe. Let's go shoot it. One thing you notice, I have a tie strap in it. Anytime I handle a firearm, the more I handle them, the more I want to be safe. And uh, it's very cheap. You can buy a hundred pack of these for a couple bucks. No reason not to have a chamber flag handy. Give you an idea on the way this, this platform works. Uh, it has a mag safety. I've got, I've got it cocked and it's on fire. It has to have a magazine in it to pull the trigger. So, uh, I've got two rounds in the mag. We're gonna go ahead and put the magazine in. 
And if I was to actually carry it, I'd probably carry it with a hammer down. I don't really like that little safety on the side, but just kind of give you an idea. It's a 32 ACP, it's a 71 grain bullet. This is a full metal jacket bullet doing around 900 feet a second, somewhere along in there. So it's not as pipsqueak as you, would, you might think it is. So I'm in my backyard on my range that I do my chronographing and test firing. Got another bullet trap, guys, right here. So we're just gonna shoot a couple in commemoration of a, of a war trophy here. All right, here we go. You notice it didn't lock back that time, but it does have a lock back feature on the magazine. So it's empty. We're gonna go ahead and flag it again and oil it up, put a little oil on it, give it a little love, put it back on the shelf. So there you have it guys, pistol model 27. I got one, get some. <laughs>